Hello and welcome back to the Financial Freedom Show. I'm your host, Chase Lawson, best-selling author of Financial Freedom, Breaking the Chains to Independence, and Creating Massive Wealth. I know there's a lot going on in the world right now with coronavirus. You know, hopefully, first and foremost, it hasn't impacted you or your family. Hopefully, everybody watching this today is safe and sound and, and well, um, and that hopefully this uh, whole pandemic will work its way out here in the not too uh, distant future. So. I know a lot of you guys sitting at home, you know, many of you guys may have either been laid off or furloughed or had your hours cut back or somehow, some way, you may not be bringing in as much money these next few months for the foreseeable future while this is all going on. So if that is you and your situation, I do apologize. I know it's unfortunate. I know none of us expected this to happen at the start of the year. So, um, but we will, we will get through this together and uh, come out of this stronger. So um, today I know a lot of us are probably sitting at home under quarantine, a lot on our mind. I know money can be a big stressor. So today I wanted to touch on 20 ways to cut expenses in 2020 and beyond. Uh, because realistically, you know, a lot of us are probably wondering how can we make more money and save more money? And there's really only two ways to do that. You can either one, increase your income or two, decrease your expenses. So um, increasing income, you're really limited by what you what your options are there. You can either take on a second job, uh, start a side hustle, um, ask for more hours at work, ask for a raise, sell some of your own belongings, right? Those are just some of the main legal ways to make more money. Um, but for a lot of us watching and listening, those might not be feasible. You know, we might be worked out to the entirety that we want to work. You know, a lot of us probably don't, don't want to work additional hours than we already are. Um, you know, we want to have that work-life balance. So, you know, for a lot of us, making more money isn't really a possibility. So it's a lot easier to focus on the other side of the coin here, which is cutting expenses. So that's why I know about a, a quarter of the way through the year, but I wanted to touch on the 20 ways to really cut expenses in 2020 and beyond top 20 tips that I have for you on this matter. So with that being said, let's get started. So tip number one, use coupons. So I know it's a no brainer. Um, you know, we see all the stories about people, you know, going into the grocery store, getting grocery carts filled with groceries for free or cheap uh, because they're coupon clippers, right? But that's a really easy way to save a lot of money on your expenses. And when it comes to coupons, there's a few big things that I wanted to mention uh, about coupons to really um, give you some good tools to leverage when it comes to coupons. Uh, so first, the first tool that I wanted to give, recommend to you is what's known as Honey. So Honey, for those of you who are unaware, is a browser plugin. Uh, you just simply download the plugin to your browser and it's a button on the browser so whenever you go to purchase anything online, and when you get to the checkout, you just click the button and it instantaneously searches the web for any and every coupon code out there to try and save you money. Uh, it tries each and every coupon code it can find to ultimately try and find the one that's gonna make you pay the least amount of money. Um, this is a plugin that I've been using for a little over two years. Uh, prior to discovering Honey, I'm the type of person that I always would go, whenever I'm shopping online, I would go and Google that company coupon codes and I would use Retail Me Not and other websites to try and find the best code. Um, those are user source, so people would submit their codes in there. A lot of them would not work. Some of them would. Some of them would save me money. but. A lot of times I wasn't sure if I was saving the most money that I possibly could. Uh, you know, I wasn't sure if there were coupons that I was missing that would save more. And it was taking me a lot of time. Honey does all of that work for you. Um, so like I said, it's just a free browser plugin, nothing beyond that. And then it just scours the globe, finding you coupon codes to try and save you the most money. So whereas before it would take me several minutes to try and look for coupons and who knows if I would even save money. Uh, Honey instantaneously looks for those coupons and finds you the best deal. Um, now, ever since using it, I mentioned I've been using it about a little over two years now. 
Uh, I've been able to save boatloads of money on my purchases. Uh, in addition, Honey is really cool in that they offer what's known as Honey Gold that allows, um, on some of your purchases, you can earn Honey Gold and then redeem that for gift cards to places like Amazon and other places. So that's another great benefit. Not only do you save money, but you also earn gift cards to use on things you might already be buying. So in my two years as of using Honey, I've been able to get not only boatloads of savings on my online purchases, but also $60 in Amazon gift cards that I've been able to use to basically get free items on Amazon as well. Um, so I know a lot of you guys are shopping online. It's an easy way to save some money um, pretty quickly there as well. And if you check in the description below, I will be including a referral code for you guys. So you click the link in the description it'll, and download it. We'll both get $5 of Honey Gold to use towards Amazon gift cards or whatever gift cards you want. So no obligation there, but if you do click that and sign up, we both get five bucks. So it's a win-win there. The second thing around coupons is obviously store coupons. So a lot of us probably get those coupons in the mail and we might just throw them all, all, all away when we get them. Stop, look through them. You might need something in there. Um, you know, I, I get coupons to the grocery store to save 10 or 20 bucks on a purchase. That's free savings right there. Uh, in addition, a lot of companies will have, you know, free uh, online coupons as well, where you might be in a clothing store, you just search that company and right on their website, you have a, a code to use to save money. Um, so once again, that can save you money with relatively little work. And then three, uh, something that I've seen more recently is actually on sites like Amazon and some other places, you can sign up for a subscription. So this will allow you to save oftentimes five to 15% on your purchase by just clicking subscribe and save on Amazon. Um, you can save five to 15% on your purchase. You just sign up for recurring shipments. They can be, you can set up for every month, every two months, every three months, whatever frequency you want, but you're not committed to actually getting those future deliveries. You can actually cancel that subscribe and save order after you, the first one ships out. So that way you're not on the hook for future purchases. You can purchase it again later and once again subscribe and save. But you know companies realize it costs a lot to acquire a customer. So if they can get you to come back and keep buying uh, by offering you a little bit of savings, it's gonna work out for them and you. So look for the subscribe and save option. Cancel it if you don't wanna keep receiving that item, but that allows you to save about five to 15% on your purchase. So that's number one, use coupons. Tip number two, avoid sales. So just because something is half off does not mean you should buy it. You know, you didn't save half on that purchase, you spent half on that purchase. You know, I know a lot of people watching like to look for sales and like to look for, uh, you know, ways to save money on the purchases, which is great. I've just talked about using coupons. It's great when things are on sale, but if you don't need it, you don't actually save that money. It's not until you actually need something where it's actually giving you that benefit. Because if you buy something without actually needing it, you're just spending money to spend money. Um, you know, outlet malls are a great example here. Everything always is on sale at outlet stores. You know, oftentimes 50, 60, 70% off of items at outlet stores off their whole store. And I always wonder when I see this, how their whole store can always be on sale year round. You know, what does that mean? How much product markup is actually in that price prior to the sale? Um, so obviously coupons and sales can be great if you need the item, but if you don't need it, you're just spending money to spend money and coming home feeling good that you saved money, but it's actually really costing you money. So once again, just because it's half off doesn't mean you saved half, you actually spent half. So tip number three, move or get a roommate. So as I mentioned in my book, your monthly rent payment or mortgage payment should not exceed more than 30% of your monthly uh, gross income, including utilities. So look at your own personal situation, see how much money you bring in on a monthly basis, and then do the math. What is 30% of that? Are you paying more than that per month for your rent and utilities? If you are, you need to reevaluate 
where you live. So options there are either move, move somewhere cheaper, um, or get a roommate. You know, having a roommate is not the worst thing in the world. Uh, it's, it allows you to save money. Uh, oftentimes, depending on where you're located, you can save money if you get a two bedroom apartment split with a roommate than you can being in a single bedroom apartment in the same general area and general conditions. So uh, if you're spending more than 30% of your monthly gross income on rent and utilities, it's definitely something to look at. Um, your rent should not be more than that. So either move somewhere cheaper or get a roommate. Um, I would also ask you, how do you really use your home? Uh, you know, I was talking with a friend of mine a couple months back who was trying to find ways to save more money. Uh, he wasn't really saving any each month. And he actually, you know, when we we're looking at his monthly expenses, he had just moved or had just signed a lease to move from one apartment to another. And his rent was going to be about double. And I asked him how he used his apartment. If he had hosted a lot of parties, had people over all the time. And he told me that he never really had anybody over. It was just where he slept. He was hardly home. You know, so I asked him, obviously it was too late at that point, but if, if you're hardly ever home, if you're not having people over to show it off, is it really worth spending all that extra money on the apartment if you're not getting that much value out of it? You know, a lot of us just have an apartment or a house to have a place to sleep at night. You know, so try and determine where your value is best spent. Is it best spent on the nicest apartment ever? Or can you save some money on your housing and splurge in other areas? That's obviously a personal decision for you to make, but just something to consider there. Tip number four, delay your purchase or service. So this is a big one. Um, you know, what I like to tell people a lot of times is that, you know, you don't have to buy something that moment. You can wait a week. Uh, a lot of times if you do wait to purchase, you'll be able to sleep on that purchase and really decide, do I really need this item? Because a lot of us may, you know, buy something on a whim that we don't need, we'll never use again, and, you know, we just wasted money on that purchase, right? So by delaying, obviously you can make better choices and defer that spending later. But the biggest thing with this tip is delaying your services work. All of us have various services that we pay for, whether it's getting your hair cut, getting the lawn cut, getting your nails done, getting a massage. You know, a lot of those that are things that we can't do ourselves or don't care to do ourselves. And a lot of times you can save money by just waiting a week or waiting a month, you know, whatever it needs to be. Um, you know, it's not like you're going to have to pay double the next time you do it on those services. So, um, you know, for example, when I was younger, I would get my hair cut typically every two weeks. Uh, I don't like my hair when it's been more than two weeks of, of growth, personally. But as I've gotten older and I'm the one paying for my haircuts, I understand that, you know, it has a cost to it. And I can't go every two weeks to get my hair cut. That's, a, you know, that takes time, that costs money. Um, I spend about $35 every time I get my hair cut. So now, instead of going every two weeks, I go about once every month or so. So, you know, if you look at it annualized, by me, you know, going half as much per year, instead of once every two weeks, going once every four weeks, I'm saving $455 per year just on getting my hair cut less frequently. Uh, in addition, I've been getting a lot of things in the mail now that it's springtime for people to come mow my grass. And they have options of weekly or bi-weekly service. I don't think your yard needs to be cut every week. Um, so, you know, why pay for somebody to come do that every week when it's not needed, right? Um, so, evaluate your situation. Can you delay that service or, or that purchase? You know, that can save you a lot of money over the whole year. If you just kind of push it off an extra week. Just imagine what the savings compounded for the various services that you use, you know, will, will lead to, right? Tip number five, utilize the budget. So a lot of people don't ever care to take a look at their expenses. They just see that their bank statements are not growing. You know, they're staying stable or they're declining. 
the only way to really get a good grasp on where your money is going is to actually <laughs> look at it and utilize a budget, right? So, uh, you know, budget, the purpose of a budget is to understand how much money comes in and how much money goes out and to plan for those expenditures, right? So when you, when you look at your budget, obviously you know how much money that you make per month from your employer or should be able to you know, compute that with reasonable certainty, right? Um, especially if you have a salary job. Um, but then look at your monthly expenses, right? And decide how much you should spend each month in various categories. We all have our fixed expenses, those expenses that are not changing each month, you know, including rent, um, car payments, you know, things like that that stay stable. Obviously, we can't really adjust those. Um, and then we'll have our variable expenses. These are, these are the things that do change each month, including utilities, gas, any other expenses as well, fun, entertainment, right? Those expenses that are going to change each and every month. And so the variable expenses are the ones that you can control. So by deciding how much you want to spend each month and putting various categories on it, it allows you to stay disciplined to that budget and you know really make sure that you're not spending more on certain categories than you have the money to or that you want to. Um, and obviously you can adjust this over time. Um, you know, I, I utilize a budget and then I look back every 10 or so days to see what I actually spent and then I, you know, adjust it accordingly. I, I'm not suggesting you do it that frequently. You can look at it once a month if, if it's easy for you, but you know, just utilize the budget so you know where your money's going and you can stay on top of that. Because it, unless you have that visibility, you're never gonna be able to really take full control on your expenses. So um, that being said, tip number six, pay down debt. So if you know me, if you know my story, if you've read the book yet, you know that I personally overcame over $20,000 in credit card debt, and I did that in less than a year. Uh, it's, it's a story that I'm proud of what I was able to accomplish in such a short time, um, but I know a lot of you out there may have various debt balances that you're really struggling to pay off. You know, there's over a trillion dollars in student loan debt in America currently. You may have credit card bills, you may have a car payment, you may have a mortgage, right? We all have debt to some extent, most of us at least. Um, and, you know, interest payments on those debts really can eat you alive, especially if it's something like credit cards. Credit cards, you know, you're typically looking at 16 to 18% annual interest rate, if not higher. So that really does add up. Um, you can obviously imagine with my 20,000 plus in credit card debt, had I not paid it off, I would have been looking at an extra, you know, close to $4,000 a year in interest there. So any, any debt balance that carries an interest rate over 7%, I would definitely advise to chip away at, at that as much as you can. You know, so I say 7% because I know that I can realistically make about 7% in the market. So if I'm getting charged more than that on my debt, I want to make sure to pay that off as soon as I can. Um, you know, so you may only have an extra hundred dollars a month coming in, but if you have a big debt balance, just pay that towards that. Um, you'll see that debt really come off and it may make it, it may make things hard short term, but long term, you're going to, you know, get out of debt sooner, you're going to have that money to spend in other areas of your life in, you know, in, in short order. So, you know, with that being said, you know, I'm sure you've probably seen on my credit card statement, it tells you, you know, right there, if you only make the minimum payment due, it'll take you this many years and this many months to pay off and you'll pay this much total, which is somehow hundreds, if not thousands of dollars more than your balance is due, right? That can be stressful to look at but you know just a little bit of extra payments whether it's five dollars a month to start ten dollars a month twenty dollars a month hundred dollars a month anything you can do to chip away at those high interest debt balances will end up saving you so much money long term so definitely pay extra on those debts especially if they're seven percent or higher tip number seven build loyalty to a brand so there can be a lot of value in 
having a loyal relationship with various companies. Um, you know, it can be as simple as the ice cream stand down, down the road that you love to frequent. You know, they may give you every five punches on, on the card is a free ice cream cone, right? That will save you a few bucks every, you know, month or two potentially uh, on that if, 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 if that's something you like. Um, and, and then it could be something bigger like with your airlines or hotels or rental car companies that you utilize, right? There's a number of companies out there and, and they like to reward their customers with, you know, whether it's through miles or points or this, that, and the other. So you can earn free flights and hotel stays and rental car nights, right? By being a little, uh, as, you know, as opposed to, you know, staying a night at the Hilton and then staying another night at the Marriott and then staying another night in the Hyatt. You know, if you don't have that loyalty, you may get some hotel points with various different hotel companies. There's too many to even list off nowadays, but you know, you're not, never going to be able to utilize those points because you're not going to accrue enough to get status with those companies. So pick the companies you like, build loyalty to them, they'll reward you. You'll be able to earn free flights, free nights in hotels, free rental car days, right? So as, as opposed to just being loyal to nobody. Tip number eight, buy generic over name brand. I know we all have our particular items that we love to get that, that are name brand in the store, right? I mean, growing up, I loved Kraft mac and cheese, Bush's baked beans, you know, Kraft Heinz ketchup, you name it. There's a lot of good name brands out there that may bring us back to our childhood or, you know, we may just love buying. Um, but a lot of times those name brands, because they're so popular, they can carry a premium price. Whereas if you buy a generic store brand, fun fact, a lot of times it may be the same exact product made by the same exact company that allows the grocery stores to private label those products under their own brands. So you may buy the store brand and it may be the same exact product as the name brand, but you can potentially save some, a good amount of money by buying the store brand, right? So you don't need name brand everything. You can buy some store brand items. It will allow you to save some money. Tip number nine, teach yourself a skill. And this could be any number of skills, whether it's teaching yourself to cook, teaching yourself how to paint a house. You know, a lot of those things that you may pay others to do for you if you just learn how to do it yourself, you could save so much money in your lifetime. I know a lot of us are stuck at home. The restaurants aren't really open right now. So use this time to your advantage to learn how to cook, learn how to do various other skills. Rather than always hiring out when you need something, if you know how to do it yourself, you can save a lot of money. Um, I used to run a house cleaning business and people would pay me several thousand dollars to paint their house. If you knew how to do that yourself, you could save thousands of dollars, right? How many people do you know that every day at lunch, they go to a fast food restaurant or go to their company cafeteria and spend, you know, five, 10 bucks a day on lunch, whereas they can make it themselves, pack a lunch, not be ashamed to do that, bring in that lunch and save, you know, a few bucks a day on doing that, right? So that's, that's another way you can save some money, some good money. Tip number 10, cut the cord and evaluate your subscriptions. So I cut the cord on cable a couple years back and I haven't looked back since. Uh, I still get the channels that I want. I stream through YouTube TV currently um, and I'm not missing anything. I, I don't want anything, right? Cable companies charge you more than they should. So my personal opinion, it's not worth it. If it is worth it for you, keep it but just consider cutting the cord. You can probably still get those channels you want for less. And then evaluate your subscriptions. You know, do you have a Netflix account, a Hulu account, an Amazon Prime account, a HBO account, a bodybuilding.com account? You know, wh where is all your money going every month? Are you actually using those subscriptions or is it just there to be there in the event that you may decide to watch one movie a month on that subscription? right? Every subscription carries its own price. What is that worth to you? 
are you getting the seven ninety nine a month value out of a certain subscription, or are you not really using it? And can you cut it and save some money, right? So evaluate your subscriptions. If you don't know where all your money is going right now, just make an inventory of all the subscriptions you're currently subscribed to, and then go from there. Tip eleven: Sleep on big purchases. So this includes anything like a mattress, an appliance, a car, a house. Anytime you're making a major purchase that's a few hundred dollars or more, it's always good to sleep on it. Never make a rash decision on the spot. I know that a lot of times you can feel pressured when you're in a store, for example, by the salesperson helping you out. You know, they'll do things like asking you, what's it going to take to earn your business today and have you walk out of the store with this product? You know, I just recently bought a new mattress a few months back and I went to several stores and without fail, each and every one of them did the same, same exact thing. They would help me out, they would show me a few mattresses, we'd find one or two that I would like, and then they would pressure me to try and make a decision then and there. Um, but, you know, I, I stick to my morals and my guns and I'm not going to make a big purchase the same day. You know, I like to be able to go home, do my research, see what others are saying. I don't just trust what the salesperson is telling me. How are other people who are actually using the product, what are they saying about it? Are they happy? Is it a good product? Does it have good reviews, right? And I know a few minutes ago we were talking about coupons and we were talking about honey. So, you know, maybe I can buy the same exact product on my website with a honey code to save more money and give me the product that I like for a better deal, right? So, you know, don't be afraid to, uh, you know, tell the sales rep that, hey, I, I don't feel comfortable making this big of a purchase right here, right now. You know, that, that deal will still be there tomorrow, most likely. So don't feel pressured that you have to go buy that item right then and right there. You know, you have the power as a consumer. Uh, it's your money. It's your decision. So don't feel ashamed if you walk out of the door make that purchase, right? Number 12, consider your environmental impact. So who knew being environmentally conscious could also have a good impact on your own financial wellness as well? Uh, I see this a lot. Uh, it's as simple as just unplugging your electronics when you're not using them. You probably have a number of electronics at home, cords plugged into the outlet on the wall or in a power strip. And even if you're not using them at a time, they're probably still consuming some level of electricity and increasing your electric bill. So whenever you're not using something, just unplug it. Uh, it's good for the environment and it's good for your bottom line as well. Um, in addition, you know, don't be afraid to change the temperature on your air conditioning or heating unit by even just one degree. A one degree change in your air conditioning or heating can have a, about a 3% impact on your uh, electric bill as well. Um, so in the summer, you know, don't be afraid to keep it one degree warmer in your house. In the winter, don't be afraid to keep it one degree cooler in your house. You can do things like open a window, turn on the ceiling fan, bundle up to make sure that you're staying comfortable, but also caring for the environment and caring for your money as well. Um, so you know, it, it can go hand in hand being aware and saving money. So, you know, do small things like that to help the environment and help your own uh, financial well-being as well. Tip 13, make some calls, threaten to cancel. So anybody who knows me can share with you that <laughs> I'm big on this. I'm not shy about it. If I ever feel like I haven't received a good service or that I'm being overcharged, I will definitely call companies and voice my displeasure, whether it be over the phone or over social media. Social media is huge nowadays and, and companies care a lot about their image and what others are saying about them. So that's why you'll see big name companies quickly replying to people on Twitter or Facebook or you know, whatever social media app you use that are upset, they want to rectify the situation, they want that customer to be happy, and they want to show that they're actually caring for that customer because people can see that, people can see what others are saying about a company. It costs a lot to acquire a new customer, 
uh, it costs more to acquire a new customer than it costs to keep a current customer. So companies will oftentimes, you know, bend a little bit to help ensure that you're happy with staying on as a customer because they know that if you stay on as a customer, that's they're going to continue to make money off of you over the long term period. So they'll, you know, they'll they'll shave off a few dollars here and there to keep you happy. Um, but you know, so if your internet provider just increased your rate twenty dollars a month, don't be afraid to call them and you know threaten to cancel or threaten to move to another another internet provider. They'll probably you know lower your rate back to what it was before, or at least knock a few bucks off per month to keep you happy. Um, if your credit card charges you an annual fee, a lot of times I've gotten that waived by just calling and asking if they can waive it or threatening to cancel that card because I don't want to pay that annual fee. They'll waive it for another year. Um, it doesn't always work, but it at least helps to at least try. A lot of, a lot of customers out there, they just pay what they're told to pay. They don't make anything of it. They don't take that extra effort to actually call and complain and see what the company can do for them. Companies are willing to work with you. Um, if you just take the simple step of calling and asking, it might take a few minutes out of your day, but if it saves you 20, 30 bucks a month or 100 bucks a year, it's probably worth it. You know, that's, if I can make 100 bucks in five minutes, I'll do it. Right? Tip 14, look at the bigger picture. So when I say look at the bigger picture, I mean look at the total cost of ownership, not the monthly payment. I'm sure a number of you listening have probably gone into a car dealership and they ask you, what do you want the monthly payment to be, right? I could care less what the monthly payment is. I'm more so concerned what the total cost of ownership is because they can make it work so that your monthly payment is below a certain number, but that may mean paying a bigger you know, down payment initially. That can mean paying over a longer period of time Somehow, some way, it's going to cost you more in the long term. So, I, t- I talked about my story recently uh, in my book about going to two different car dealerships, and it was night and day different. You know, one dealer was a few thousand dollars more over another over a three year period, and it's just crazy how different it is. Um, so, I always sit down, do the math. What are you going to pay over the long term period? And is that reasonable? Is that realistic? Are others paying that much? Is it actually worth that much money? And you know, when you do the math, it'll it'll tell you what you know what what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. Like I said, I could care less what the monthly payment is as long as I can realistically afford it. I'm more so concerned with what is the total cost, right? So you know, obviously with a house, is it worth X hundred thousands of dollars? Obviously, the mortgage payment will work, its, will work itself out, but is it worth the total cost, right? Number 15, evaluate costs in the same unit of measure. So, a lot of times when you go in the store, things will be packaged in different sizes. You know, you'll have a 12 pack of paper towels right next to an 8 pack of paper towels. You'll have a 40 ounce can next to a 32 ounce can, right? And so, it can be hard to know what's a good deal, what isn't a good deal. Um, but a lot of times what you'll see on those price tags in the grocery stores is it'll be converted to an equivalent unit of measure, whether that's per ounce or per individual count, right? That way you can use that bottom num- that small number at the bottom to compare two products and say which is less per equivalent unit than the other. Sometimes it makes sense to buy in bulk, but only buy in bulk if it does make sense. If you live alone, do you really need that 80 pack of toilet paper? It's probably gonna last you several years. Um, you know, whereas if you have a family to feed, you might need a bigger package, right? But if we're talking between a gallon of milk and a half gallon of milk, if the gallon of milk is, you know, saves you a few cents per ounce and it's gonna last you a week and a half, it's probably worth 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 buying that. So Always evaluate your costs in the same unit of measure. It'll allow you to make more strategic, smarter decisions. 16, cut your bad habits. So a lot of us may have things that aren't the best habits in the world that we're spending a lot of money towards, whether it's smoking cigarettes or gambling on sports. 
his things are costing us money and <laughs> that money is not being recovered. Um, you know, if we look at smoking, for example, the cost of cigarettes have continued to rise over the years. Um, I just checked and the average cost of a pack of cigarettes in Texas is currently $6.69 per pack. So that adds up a lot. Uh, I know it can be hard to cut bad habits, but if you're able to, imagine if you had an extra $6.69 per week just on cigarettes alone. That will add up. Um, so just consider cutting your bad habits. 17. Don't be afraid of buying used. So I know a lot of people like having the biggest, the best, brand new items, right? Put your cool card aside. You don't need brand new everything. There's, there can be value in buying things used. Go to your local library. They probably have a lot of books available for you to check out for free that you otherwise might spend 15, 20 bucks on. Or you may go to a secondhand thrift store and find some gently used or even brand new clothes at a discount. Don't be afraid to do that. Um, I know furniture, for example, can be very expensive brand new, but there's things like Facebook Marketplace that allow you to buy gently used items from other people for a lot less money. Rather than spending thousands of dollars on furniture, maybe you can spend a few hundred dollars on furniture. Just an example. Tip 18, look for free days or consider buying a city pass. So depending on where you're located, your local city or town may have free days each month or each week at a local museum or art gallery or some place that, you know, if, if you're interested in checking it out, it gives you an opportunity, an opportunity to go for free or maybe for a reduced price. That could be a fun date you go on or a fun trip you do without having to spend a lot of money. If you're traveling to a city or even if you're in a major city that you just happen to live in, they may have a city pass that you can take advantage of. If you're already planning on going to a lot of the places that are offered on the city pass, maybe that maybe you buy the city pass and you can save a few bucks on each place you go and go to some places you weren't even planning on going because it's in, it is included as well. So an option to save some more money there and have some fun things to do. Tip 19, when getting to go, pick it up instead of getting delivery. So I know a lot of us have probably had a lot of food delivered here of late. Um, you know, we're stuck at home. Don't have much else to, to go. Obviously we want to be safe. So, but things will get back to normal soon. And, you know, whenever you get your food to go and you're not actually eating in a restaurant, you can save a lot of money by going and picking it up yourself instead of having it delivered. You know, a lot of people like to use services like Uber Eats and Grubhub, but depending on how much food you're getting and where you're ordering from, you could experience a 20% or more premium by using one of those apps for delivery as opposed to what you pay just going in yourself and picking it up. So if it's a restaurant that's pretty close by, just hop in your car, drive down the street. Don't pay an extra 20% if you don't have to. Especially if it's a big amount and you're spending more than two or three bucks for the extra uh, service fee of having it delivered, right? That's, you can get a gallon of gas for about a dollar fifty right now, so. And finally, tip number 20, don't use the instant money transfer option. So a lot of us probably have Venmo or Cash App or PayPal or some various online payment app that we use to easily transfer funds to friends and family. Those apps are great. Uh, it's really been a game changer. You can instantly send money to whoever you need to pay for something right then and there without having to have cash, without having to hand, hand over credit cards. But I know a lot of people that they get that money that somebody owes them through Venmo or Cash App or PayPal, and then they use the instant money transfer option so that they can get that money right then or right there, that's kind of pointless. They charge you a 1% fee for that instant money transfer option, whereas standard transfer is one to three days. Is your money really worth paying an extra 1% to get it one day sooner? If you 
compute that to an annual percentage rate, you're not going to be happy with that annual interest rate that you're paying on your, your own money. So why would you, you know, you're not going to take out a, a loan at that interest rate. So why would you use the instant money transfer option if that's the case? I mean, obviously, if you're cash strapped and you absolutely need it, maybe, but even then, you shouldn't have to pay an extra fee just to get your money. What's one day of, of waiting for that money? So this has been 20 ways to cut expenses in 2020 and beyond. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I uh, love your feedback. And if you do want a copy of this list of 20 tips, be more than happy to send it directly your way. Just send me an email at financialfreedombook at gmail.com and just ask for the, the list of 20 ways to cut expenses and I'll send it right your way. Thanks for listening. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe below, uh, comment, like, share with others. Love your feedback. Let me know what you want me to cover next. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, take it easy, be safe, be well, and let's go get them.